Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like to get some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. I mentioned in last week's What's for Dinner video that that week was a little unusual for us because we had fall break, we were out of town, and we ate out a couple times. This week is also a little unusual. We had two birthdays this week. First up, we did a date night charcuterie board. Maybe a month or so ago, I mentioned in a What's for Dinner video that we did a date night and we ordered a charcuterie board just from a local lady here in our area. I saw that she posted on Facebook a couple weeks ago that she was doing like a spooky Halloween themed charcuterie board. And so I thought it would be a fun date night to do that spooky Halloween charcuterie board and then for us to watch a Halloween movie. So that's what we did. Here's the package we got beautifully presented, and along with that, we had a, this little gift bag. Inside the gift bag, she gave us some trail mix, some of these spooky little gummies, some candy, and then these super adorable little monster cookies. They're just Oreos that she covered in chocolate. Now, for the setup, I just took a bamboo tray that I already had. I laid the charcuterie board out on it. I put that uh, like little monster mash trail mix in a separate little bowl, added some napkins that I already had on hand, the little cookies, and then these two glasses. I found these at the Dollar Tree. And to serve with that in the glasses, I had this blackberry cider that we got from an orchard maybe a week or two ago. And we just ate on the couch and watched the movie. Here's my plate. This was so, so yummy. Now you don't have to purchase a charcuterie board to do this. This could be done really inexpensively you could use things that you already have on hand aldi has really great prices on like gourmet cheeses and meats so this would be super cute to do just homemade this was so much fun we love snacky little dinners like this this was our uh, dinner this night the next day was my middle sister's birthday and she requested pinto beans and cornbread so we went over to my mom's house and had a family birthday dinner. I brought some fried potatoes and then we stopped by KFC and grabbed some fried chicken. And then I got my little brother a little bit of macaroni and cheese. And so I had just a little bit of that. And then we have the pintos and the cornbread. These little round things of cornbread, my mom said she got these at Publix. I think they're in the deli section and they're delicious. They were really good. If you have a Publix near you, I would recommend those. They're super yummy. She just warmed them up in the toaster oven. And then with my pintos, I've mentioned this before, but I like raw white onion and mustard and then we had a chocolate pie for her for her birthday cake slash dessert and this was dinner this night this was super delicious i don't know what it is about it but my mom's pintos are always better than mine <laughs> even though we make them the same way hers are so much better and these were delicious for dinner the next night, I made fridge dips. I've shared this before on my channel, but we love this dinner. My husband recently requested this because it's been a while since we've had them. They are so, so easy and super delicious. First though, I'm going to start with my side dish. I'm just throwing together a quick pasta salad. In this bowl, I have rotini pasta that I cooked according to the package instructions. About the last minute or two of cooking, I added in some frozen peas. Once that was done cooking, I drained it really well, added it to this bowl. Next, I'm adding in some ranch dressing. This is leftover homemade ranch, but you could use your favorite bottled. I'm going to add in a tablespoon or two of milk to loosen it up a little bit. And then I'm adding some shredded cheddar cheese and bacon pieces. I'm going to stir that until it's well combined and then place this into the refrigerator while I finish the rest of dinner. And you can really customize this however you like. You could add whatever cheese, vegetables, meat, whatever you have on hand. It's a great way to use things up. Now for the French dips. We like sauteed onions and mushrooms, so in this skillet, I just have about a tablespoon of butter. I added some thinly sliced onions, some sliced mushrooms, a little dash of Worcestershire sauce, and some salt and pepper, and I'm just going to cook these for about 10 minutes until they're soft. Here in this saucepan here, I have a can of beef consomme. I'm just slowly warming it up, and then I'm going to use some thin sliced roast beef, sliced provolone cheese, and these steak rolls, and then I also set out this horseradish sauce just in case my husband wanted it. I've got my oven preheating to 400 degrees, and what I like to do is set out small pieces of foil. I place one of the steak rolls in each piece of foil. I add some of the roast beef, then the sauteed onions and mushrooms, the sliced provolone cheese. I do like to butter the bread, and then I put the sandwich together, wrap the foil around it, and then bake these for just about 15 minutes until the bread gets nice and toasted and the cheese is melted. Here are the sandwiches out of the oven and the warmed up beef consomme. We use that as the au jus to dip our sandwiches in. And then here's that pasta salad. Next, I'll show you the plates. 
And here are the plates. So we have the French dips, the au jus, and the pasta salad. Like I said, this is so easy to put together and it's really yummy. I recommend you give this a try. For dinner the next night, I made baked barbecue chicken. I tried a new recipe for the side dish for a jalapeno popper corn salad. This recipe is from Plain Chicken. I'll have it linked in the description box below. I wanted to go ahead and get this started so it could chill in the refrigerator while the chicken was cooking. In this bowl, I'm going to add in some softened cream cheese. And if you're like me and forgot to set your cream cheese out, no worries. You can just put it in the bowl and then place it in the microwave on defrost for just about five or 10 seconds and it'll soften up just fine. Then I'm adding in my sour cream, my mayonnaise. Next, I'm going to add my spices, which are cumin, garlic powder, onion powder, chili powder, paprika, and some salt and pepper. And a quick note, I am having this recipe. In case you're new to my channel, I cook just for the two of us. It's my husband and I, so it's pretty normal for me to have recipes. I do like to mention it, though, just in case you look at the recipe and notice that my measurements were different. Once I've added my spices, I'm going to stir the cream cheese mixture until it's well combined. Then I'm going to add in my corn. I started out by just using this bag of corn, but once I started mixing everything together, I noticed that uh, it needed more corn. So I ended up adding a can of corn that I drained. I'm also adding in my jalapeno pepper, and then I'm going to add in my shredded cheddar cheese and my bacon pieces. Stir that until it's well combined. You can give this a taste and adjust the seasonings. I did that and I felt like it needed just a little bit more heat, but I didn't feel like adding a, another jalapeno pepper. So I just added in a little bit of cayenne pepper. And that's it. This will go into the refrigerator covered just until dinner is ready. Now for the chicken, I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees. I found these chicken thighs on Markdown at Food Lion the other day. So I'm going to take some of the chicken and place it onto a cookie sheet. I just lined it with aluminum foil just to make it easier for cleanup. I am taking some kitchen scissors and I'm going to cut off any of the extra fat or skin. And to season up the chicken, you really can season this however you like. I have a little bit of this uh, leftover barbecue seasoning that I put together. I love this barbecue seasoning. I'll have it linked in the description box below. I'm going to season both sides of it pretty liberally and then I added just a little bit of salt to one side of the chicken. I'm going to place this into the oven for about 35 to 45 minutes until the chicken is at least 165 degrees. Here's the chicken once it's cooked all the way through and then I like to add some barbecue sauce to both sides. Pop it back in the oven for about 10 minutes and then that's it. Here's the finished chicken and then here is that corn salad and next I'll show you our plates. And here's our dinner. So we have the chicken, the corn salad, and then we had some of that bacon ranch pasta salad that I made the other night left over. And I put a little bit on my husband's plate. I wasn't super hungry, so I just stuck with the chicken and the corn salad. That corn salad was really good, and it made quite a bit. I half the recipe, and it still made enough for us for dinner and leftovers for a couple days. And then that barbecue chicken, it's so simple, but it's delicious. Because it's dark meat, it stays tender and juicy and flavorful. And then that barbecue sauce gets really sticky. Oh, so good. That was our dinner this night. The next day was my brother's 13th birthday, which I am in denial over. I'm just going to be honest. In my mind, he is still, you know, two or three years old, sweet, cute little boy. Part of me is so sad that he's growing up so fast, but the other part of me is super excited to see the person that he's becoming. But he wanted to go to a restaurant in Nashville called Santa Fe Cattle Company. That's what he wanted for his birthday. So that's where we went for dinner and it was delicious. It was so, so good. I didn't get pictures of what everyone ate, but we shared some appetizers. Then everyone had their entrees. For me, um, my entree came with a side salad. And so I started out with that and I had their homemade chipotle bacon ranch. It's delicious. And then for my entree, I got their steak and shrimp. To be honest, I was super full after the appetizers that we split and they have like the most delicious rolls with cinnamon butter and I'd eaten one of those. So after all that and my salad, I only ate like less than half of my steak and like two or three shrimp, but not to worry. It didn't go to waste. I brought it home. My husband had it for lunch the next day. That was our dinner. And then for dessert, we had brought a cake. My mom brought it and we served it and they came out and hooped and hollered for his birthday. And it was so much fun to celebrate his birthday and have dinner together as a family. That was our dinner this night. 
For the last dinner in this week's video, I went a little bit off the meal plan. I was going to make ground beef and broccoli, which I saw on Taylor Elmore's channel, but Asian food just didn't sound good to me this particular day. And so I was trying to think of what to do with the ground beef. And I remembered that I bought some hamburger helper the other day. Now, honestly, this is probably the second, maybe the third time in my adult life that I've made hamburger helper. It's just not something that we eat very often, but I saw it recently on Tamara's channel, Southern Wife Everyday Life. I'll link it in the description box below. And for whatever reason it just looked good so i bought that mix the other night so i'm just going to cook this according to the package instructions for myself now my husband is not at all a hamburger helper fan there are a lot of things that maybe he's not crazy about but he'll eat if i make it but hamburger helper is not one of those he just doesn't care for it so um i took part of the pound of ground beef and just made a hamburger patty for him cheeseburger sounded good to him so i used some of this mccormick hamburger seasoning just fried it up in the skillet topped it with some colby jack cheese and these are our plates super easy dinner and it was yummy to go along with my hamburger helper i just took a piece of bread added a little butter and warmed up some peas that was our dinner this night that's it thank you so much for watching i hope that you like this video and i hope you have a great rest of the day thanks so much Bye bye